the main aim of Infection Prevention and Control Unit in Kenyatta National Hospital it is to reduce the hospital acquired infection. And this is basically done through adoption of the uh, WHO standard precautions. In relation to COVID-19 pandemic, IPC has been given the role to ensure staff safety and avoid transmission of the COVID-19 infection as they carry on with care and even beyond to the community. So basically, the IPC unit will ensure that every activity is based on the transmission-based precautions. Transmission-based precautions are three. One is airborne precaution, the other one is droplet precaution and contact precaution. But for COVID-19, per se, we will adopt to the droplet precaution. Infection Prevention and Control Unit has ensured that the staff are safe as they carry on with their work and they are protected by the personal protective equipment that they are going to use. However, there are factors that influence the selection of the personal protective equipment. One is the kind of exposure that is anticipated. This may be a spray, a splash, or you will get exposed through touching the contamination. The other one is the durability of the personal protective equipment. We let it stand the work that I'm about to do. The third one is the fit. How does it fit the user? The specialized way that it has been made to ensure that it gives the protection that is expected. However, there are key points to remember about use of personal protective equipment. Always don't before contact with the patient. Use the PPE carefully. Do not use the PPE to contaminate the environment. For the purposes of uh, safety, by use of personal protective equipment for staff, we always look at two scenarios. For general care, for example, administering drugs, feeding the patient, and the other scenario is when we are anticipating an aerosol generating procedure. This could be open suction, laryngoscopy, dental procedures, intubation, resuscitation. And so for these two scenarios, we have different ways that we put on our personal protective equipment to ensure that we are safe. The staff were taken through a donning and a doffing procedure. And we will start with donning to go and take general care of a patient, a scenario like a doctor going to review a patient. And the PPEs that will be needed here are only few. So the doctor will be in a simple surgical mask, well fitted to ensure that the mouth, the nose is well covered. And then we put on the lab coat, which is also a personal protective equipment. The doctor can decide to choose to use a, a plastic apron and eventually carry the trolley, which has the equipment that they plan to use. When getting into an infectious disease unit, you need to prepare everything that you may require because you will not be required to keep moving in and out. The doctor will be able to put on gloves depending on the procedure that he's going to perform. Finally, you do not carry the files or the patient's notes into the ward or the patient care area. You will have to document after you have completed to, uh, reviewing the patient and taking care of the patient outside the patient care area. The aerosol generating procedures are many, but for this particular purpose, we are going to, to choose one, which is suction, and this can be done by a doctor or a nurse. The personal protective equipment that will be used will ensure that the aerosols that are being generated will not get to contaminate the caregiver. So for this purpose, the caregiver will choose a reinforced apron. The apron ensures again that you do not contaminate yourself with the aerosolization from the COVID-19 virus. Uh, an N95 mask, 
the N95 may not be superior in the filtration, it is only the fit that fits very well. And in this case, we are anticipating aerosolization, so we mean the splashes to go further than expected. A face shield or a pair of goggles will protect the exposed mucous membranes of the eyes so that we do not uh, leave any chances of infection. Gloves, don them on and proceed and take care of the patient. After the procedure, the caregiver should remove. We'll start with hard hygiene. Remove the gown. Perform hard hygiene. Remove the gloves. Perform hard hygiene. Then remove the goggles. Holding the goggles from on top of the ears and the goggles will be soaked for a reuse because these are not single use. Then the caregiver will perform hard hygiene. Then remove the N95 mask, dispose it into the clinical waste bin, perform hard hygiene, and then continue to document the findings into the patient notes. Once the doctor ha has gone to review the patient and is carrying some equipment, that may be used during the review or the examinations, it is prudent that the doctor is able to take care of this equipment by using a methylated spirit to swab either the stethoscope, the thermometers, and every equipment that is used before proceeding to take care of another patient. The gloves that the doctor may use should be changed before you proceed to the next patient and then perform hard hygiene. Using friction, we can use the alcohol-based hard wrap or liquid soap and running water. When we use the liquid soap and running water, we take one minute and when we use the alcohol-based hard sanitizer, we use 30 seconds, that's half a minute because it evaporates and the steps are the following palm to palm, the back of your hands, in between your fingers, remember the thumb, the other thumb, then the knuckles and the nail beds of the other hand, then the depression on your hand. If you have a ring, you could move it and touch that area because it could harbor some microorganisms, and then you complete at the wrist. Whenever you plan to perform hard hygiene, you should not have ornaments to ensure that the hard hygiene is effective later. So IPC therefore calls upon all of you to ensure that we keep this pandemic at bay by adhering to IPC standard precautions and wearing appropriate PPEs.